Good morning. Bright and early, rise and shine. I know you're shocked. I'm doing a video like one day after another video if it ever loads. I'm hoping it's going to load. My internet was acting crazy yesterday. Good morning and welcome to Defining Deborah. I'm, I'm going to name change it just a little bit. Discussions with Defining Deborah. I like that. And it's going to be sort of like a reaction um, page, which I didn't know anything about that till recently. And just my opinion on things about um, by an old woman who ain't got nothing else to do sometimes. So, um, yes, it's early. It is 742 here on the East Coast. And where my headquarters is for my job, it is 642. So I normally start work um, fairly early um, on this side. Sometimes I start at 5.30. My regular time is 6.30. So I'm about an hour in. And I was thinking last night, I was like, you know what? I spent a lot of time watching other people's pages. Excuse me, I'm drinking my Starbucks. Yes, I am. Yes, I am. So, um, I thought, well, you know what? <sighs> there are things that you can bring to the table. You're not exactly sure exactly what it is yet, but okay, I'm just scooting my own self up to the table, elbowing my way in and saying, hey, I'm here. So anyway, you know, there's people on YouTube that it just amazes me how gullible we are just as people and how manipulative others are in just using the weaknesses of others to be able for them to have money. And so, um, I'm trying to have a little music playing in the background. Hopefully it's not too loud. But, um, so I said, what can I bring to YouTube that would be inviting, enlightening, motivational, uplifting? Because that's the type of person I am now. Wasn't always that way, but I am now. So, I did do a video a long time ago of me just doing a Bible verse. And I think I just did the Bible verse. I don't know if I elaborated on it. So this morning, I felt a bit inspired. This picture that you're seeing, because I look a hot mess at this time. I don't look all that great when I did the video the other day going to the dentist. I look even worse this early in the morning because I ain't did nothing but rolled out the bed and came and sat at the computer. So this picture is actually an original piece of art by a young man here in South Carolina. I really do love being able to help, um, they call them here, starving artists. Um, so a lot of times I'll go on YouTube Marketplace or friends may be advertising and I'll buy a piece or two. And so when I seen this, it just really, really hit me. Um, red is my favorite color. So I bought this piece for me for my birthday. My birthday was in August. So, um, yeah, I decided to go ahead and do that because I couldn't think of anything that I wanted to buy myself. So um, I figured I'd add this to the collection. Like I told him, one day he will be famous, hopefully, and I'll have a piece on the front end. So I like the color, so I figured that would be my background for this morning since you're not seeing me. So anyway, I'm not going to be on here long because I do need to make the moolah because nobody else is going to come in here and do it for me. So, um, I thought I wanted to, there's two places I want to start. First, I was listening to a YouTuber and I, you know, this is my big thing here. Don't be talking about God and, and you don't know where any of the scriptures are. You over here paraphrasing and making stuff up. And see, this is where I have a problem with most, most of us who call ourselves Christians. You're sitting there listening to a person who is paraphrasing and ain't even doing a good job at that. And you're agreeing because you don't know your word. The Bible is a book that everybody can read. It's in, I don't think there's not a language that it's not written in. I mean, even if you're blind and deaf, you can still be able to read the Bible. 
So you don't have to have somebody paraphrasing God's word to you. You can read it for yourself, which it would behoove you because the person did say something right that the word is supposed to be in you. So it can't be in you by somebody else paraphrasing it and regurgitating it to you. So, yeah, um, that's a big stickler of mine. I cannot quote you all the Bible verses verbatim. So what I do is, hey, nifty little thing. I got a Bible. <laughs> and I got several. And guess what? It's even on your um, phone. You can just Google a Bible, Bible verse. Wow, isn't that nifty? So you don't have to sit there and make it up or be too lazy. You're going to give a Bible semi pseudo Bible lesson to people and don't use the Bible. That is the craziest thing I've ever heard of. But hey, YouTube has its charlatans, as they say. So I wanted to start off with um, something that I see this YouTuber doing. I did a short on this YouTuber. And my sisters say that I'm obsessed with her. It's not that. The thing is, I do not like seeing people use other people. And my thing is, we're all, if you're an able-bodied person, why wouldn't you want to take care of yourself? What is this new thing now of us becoming leeches and latching on to other people and sucking their, their resources dry? I mean, from the men to the women, I, I don't understand it. What happened to grown folks being grown? But we don't want nobody to tell us what to do or anything like that, but we want you to please supply my needs. Wow. So anyway, I see this person every, every, every video they make. And I mean, every video they make, they beg. Cash app, um, Amazon gift list, just sending straight money, um, mailing, mailing gifts. This person has so much stuff now that they look like a hoarder. Because they don't have enough room for it. And yet, every day they beg for more. I don't know when enough would be enough. I don't know. But the Bible that I was taught with says this. And I'm going to give you a Bible scripture. Psalms 37 and 25 says, I was young and now I am old. Yet I have never seen the righteous forsaken or their children begging bread. Now, David was talking about comparing the righteous and the unrighteous and who would be able to go over to the promised land. This is in the Old Testament. And that's when, you know, they were, um, remember when God sent them out to go to the promised land? It took them years and years and years and years to get there. And it wasn't supposed to take that long. But anyway, um, there, it, was a con it was a comparison about who would be able to get in there, the wicked or the righteous. And he was saying that even from the time that he was young and he was an old man when he said this, he's like, he's never seen a righteous forsaken or their children begging for bread. Meaning that if you truly are a believer of God and you believe that Jesus died on the cross for your sins and you have given your life over to this belief and you have faith, then you're not going to be begging because you're a child of God. You're the righteous one. So why would God watch you beg? Why would God want you to beg? Why would God want your children to beg? That makes, you know, what type of God is that? You know, um, to piggyback on that, Let's go to Luke 12, 27 through 29. Look at the lilies and how they grow. They don't work on, sorry. Look at the lilies and how they grow. They don't work or make their clothing. Yet Solomon in all his glory was not dressed as beautifully and as they are. And if God cares so wonderfully for flowers that are here today, and thrown into the fire tomorrow, he will certainly care for you. 
putting those two verses together, if you're righteous, you don't have to beg because God's going to take care of you. And even more so in Luke, he's telling us, and this is the New Testament, that, hey, if God is going to let the lilies look so pretty over there in the fields, why would he not take care of you? They don't even have to worry about it. And they're, going, they're not even going to live that long. We are here for X, God gives us 70, but I pray that we get more. And definitely, I pray every day that I live a lot longer than 70 since I'm closer to 70 right now. But yeah, why wouldn't he want to take care of me if I'm righteous? Like right now, if you look, especially if you're on the East Coast, Northern going, we're starting down here now in South Carolina, but definitely as you're going further up the coast, further up north, you're seeing the leaves turn. You can see some of the most beautiful colors this time of the year. I love fall. I love how like the tree, I'm thinking tomorrow I might do it on the front porch, how my tree was green one day and now it's starting to turn yellow. It's like yellow and green. But soon I'll be able to look across the street at the trees or across from where my house is. And they're going to be orange and red and yellow and green. All those beautiful colors. God has dressed nature for the fall. So why would he not let me have food and clothing and shelter if I have faith in him? I just wanted to put that out there. Because <clears throat> people would tell you, there ain't nothing wrong with me putting my cash out. There ain't nothing wrong with me having an Amazon wish list for people to send me stuff. I look at it like this. If YouTube is your job, and you should be able to grow your business enough where you're making your money from YouTube, correct? And then if the people who watch you feel like they want to donate or give to you for whatever reason, they thought that your content was so good or they just begin to like you as a person, by all means, people can do whatever they want with their money. But I'd be darned if I'd be sitting on YouTube begging folks to send me money to take care of me. That... I mean, I see ones who purport that they're pastors and all this stuff begging. I have never understood that concept because as far as I know, and I can say this honestly, I have had a lot and I have lost it all. And now I'm about eh, in between. I mean, I live very comfortably, but nowhere in there did I have to beg even when I didn't have. I trusted that God was going to take care of my needs and anything over that. And that's exactly what he did. So this begging thing, that's nothing but scamming. That That's man living on manna. Now, the Bible says it's not that um, money is bad. It's what we perceive it and how we use it. When you're out there begging and, and trying to amass more and more and more so you can buy designer clothes and big houses and, you know, your children can brag about what they got and all this stuff. No, money is for us to be able to use it as a resource to help the people of God. And that's one thing I've done. When the, with the monies that I have, I'm always dispersing it back out to help people the same way Jesus did when he was out and about. You didn't see him carrying around big old bags of money, or you didn't see him driving some big old fancy, well, they have cars, but chariots or whatever back then, and had a big old church in every little town, and he wore silk and gold robes and gold sandals and all this, this stuff. No, he didn't. He came to set us free. We are ambassadors of Jesus Christ. So our job is to be out in the highways and byways ministering the word of God. And that YouTube is one way that you can do that. But nowhere in there does it says you need to get paid for it. I think of it as an honor anytime I'm able to discuss and share the word of God with somebody. It's an honor. You don't have to pay me. I tell you what, I didn't even know pastors got paid. I thought that they were so happy to be able to do that. If they surely would not ask for money. Well, I sure was blown away when I first went to the church, seriously, to um, really, really, really get to know the Lord and have a relationship with him. But that's a whole nother story. You know, I can get on a whole tangent when I get on here. I have got to do better. Okay, so 
I just wanted to throw that out there. People, please go to your word and see what God says versus what man says. Because man will jack you up. Will jack you up. So this is my motivational word for the morning. And I want you to think about this when you hear it. And if you want to read it again, I, I love Psalms. Psalms has a lot um, of books that just you can use for so many things, for protection, for encouragement, for um, um, boosting yourself up. It, it just has a lot in there. So this morning, I'm going to take this encouraging word from Psalms 1. And it's Psalms 1. One through six. Blessed is the one who does not walk in step with the wicked, or stand in the way that sinners take, or sit in the company of mockers, but whose delight is in the law of the Lord, and who meditates on his law day and night. That person is like a tree planted by streams of water, which yields its fruit in season, and whose leaf does not wither. Whatever, whatever they do prospers. Not so the wicked. They are like shaft that the wind blows away. Therefore the wicked will not stand in the judgment, nor sinners in the assembly of the righteous. For the Lord watches over the way of the righteous, but the way of the wicked leads to destruction. I like that because it talks about the fact of... Um, the part that really jumped out to me when I first read Psalms and I really was getting it, that we are planted like a tree next to streams of water, which yields its fruit in season and whose leaf does not wither. Whatever they do prospers. I was just talking about nature and here we are getting, we're in fall or rolling over into fall real good. And, you know, the trees are planted. And, and their leaves are turning and all that, but they're still yielding their fruit because right now it's time for them to shed that those old clothes and get prepared to put on the new when spring comes in. And through the winter, they go through a rough time. You know, some of them will get some snow, some may not, but they'll get rain, snow, wind, cold, cold weather. But then comes spring, God would dress them again in their glorious, nice, beautiful, blooming colors and flowers and all those things. So I, I want you to take this with you that if you meditate on the word of God, if you first give your life to Christ, believe that he died on the cross for you and get to know being a real relationship with the Lord, with the Lord, with the Lord and read his word. And meditate on his word. Get it inside you so that it's the living word. When they say the living word, that simply means that the precepts that God has put in the Bible are words that you live by. And it, you know, helps for you to dictate your day and monitor your life. You know, you, you put your life up against the word for you to judge yourself and look and see where you're at. What I do know is that if the word is in you, it's going to show out of you. God does not start on the outside a lot of times. People are so busy looking at what somebody does on the outside. But when the word really starts working, it starts working on the inside of you. And then people will start seeing it on the outside and you won't even have to say anything. Other people will notice how much you have changed and how different you walk and talk and move. All right. I think I've been on here. I want to say 20 minutes or so and I better get myself in gear. I'm almost two hours in and nowhere close to the normal amount of work that I usually have done by now. So those were um, just some things I wanted to say this morning. Uh, you guys, it's Wednesday, midweek. I hope you're having a great week. Can you believe that we are in almost in October? It's almost Christmas time again. My favorite time of the year. Um, I cannot believe it. So yeah, I got a long day. I um, have my job that I do. I work from home. And then I do have um, patients that I'm seeing. Uh, not patients, I hate saying that. Clients that I'm seeing this evening. 
So I am just like a workaholic. I work 12 to 16 hours a day with the at-home job. And then I still see um, clients during the week. And I just picked up something else that I'm looking at doing. I hadn't finished the training yet. But this is how I look at it. And I'm going to leave, leave these words to you since we're kind of talking about money and being able to take care of ourselves and trusting God and all that. And how, you know, trusting God that we don't have to beg. And that's for everything. You know, we don't have to beg for clothes, food, shelter, relationships, you know, money, jobs, any of that. You know, if you have faith, you put it before God and you leave it there. You don't go back and forth picking up what you put before him. You really have to have faith. You can't be pitiful and powerful at the same time. So um, I want to leave this with you. In the Old Testament in Genesis, when God describes the Garden of Eden, he talks about all the different rivers that are going into Eden. And if I'm not mistaken, it's five. I will check and see and get back with you. But that's how I look at my home. My home is my Garden of Eden. And you should never have just one stream of resources coming into your home. God was showing his finances right there. I know it's hard to believe, but if you look at it, you can see. If your home is Eden and there's five streams of resources coming in, then you won't be in lack. We look at it where we want to have one job and that's our only way, that's our only resource coming in. But you can have much more you know, ways of bringing in money. I'm always thinking of one way of continuing to have resources come in, especially as I'm getting older. I mean, right now I have one, two, three, and working on a fourth. And so that way, if one is slow or drying up, you still got four more coming in. And you don't have to have five. I'm just, you know, I'm, I'm just a person that's always thinking, always doing. So that's why. But, you know, one or two. And that could simply be you're working and your spouse is working. Or, you know, your spouse is working and you're doing something at home. Or you have your own business, you know, and you're bringing your children in to help build the business. You know, and your spouse has something else that they're doing. Or you're, you're starting your own business while you're working at somebody else's job. There's millions of ways you're using your gifts and talents to help bring in resources. You might be a builder and you're selling stuff. You might be a sewer and you're making stuff. This time of the year, you know, I love arts and crafts. I used to make a zillion reefs and take them to the flea market and sell them. Now, at that time I was married, my ex and my children hated it because they would be out there in the cold, whether it was rain, snow, sleet. We were out there selling Christmas wreaths. But that's because I wanted to see if people thought my wreaths were as beautiful as I thought they were and I could bring in extra money. So, think about it. While you're being that strong tree, having faith planted by the river and getting your resources from the Lord, Think about if there's other ways that you can have more streams coming into your house. And this could be for finances. And I promise this is going to be the last word, y'all. It could be for finances. It could be for relationships. You can look at your streams as me um, working on building better relationships with my family members, with my children, with my coworkers at work, with myself, with my friends. It could be um, making sure that I'm taking care of what it is that God has given me, being a good steward over what I have. So me bringing in streams could be making sure that I'm paying my bills, making sure I'm doing maintenance on the house that I have, the car that I have. You know, look at it, think outside the box. My pastor told me one time that you can read the Bible and that each scripture has at least about 27 different meanings. So we can read the Bible over and over and over and over and over and get a different meaning from some of the same scriptures that we've read before. Because I think it really depends on where you're at in your life and what your needs are that God will interpret it to you to fit where you're at. Now, isn't that something? That this one book can be for all of us and presented to us in a way giving us what each one of us needs. That's why sometimes when you're at church, the pastor's preaching, and there's like seven people in there or 20 people in there saying, 
oh, that word was for me. You know why? Because that same scripture that that pastor preached on, God made it so that when it came out that person's mouth and hit everybody's ears, it was fit for you. For whatever was going on with you, that scripture fit it for you. He's just a miracle worker. All right, so y'all, I can talk all day and all night, but I'm going to get off here so that I can keep this resource <laughs> coming up in the house. So you guys have a wonderful midweek. It's hump day, hump to hump hump, and I hope everything is going well. And if not, start the day out different today. When your feet hit the ground, say, Lord, this is the day that you have made. We shall rejoice and be glad in it. And I always say um, Jabez prayer. And so um, I say that, but I put my name in it so that I can get the blessings. And I, you know what? And that's that's a um, neat thing for you guys to do. Try it out. I tell people, I read the book years and years ago. Um, and so let me make sure I get the... Uh, the right scripture for you. First Chronicles 4. And this is what I say. I say, I don't start off with the mother talking about she gave birth to him in pain. I was like, Deborah cried out to the God of Israel, Oh, that you would bless me and enlarge my territory. Let your hand be with me and keep me from harm so that I will be free from pain. And God granted Deborah what she requested. All you got to do is put your name in there. I say that every morning because I don't know what God's going to do. But I tell you what, it's always something awesome. You guys have a wonderful day. Bye.